Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 20,000 subscribers. Please keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, and please continue to motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. I will really, really appreciate. So today I'm going to be reacting to what happens to good non Muslims on judgment day so without wasting time let's get into the video so this is a question that is always asked about well i have good friends i have good neighbors i have relatives i have uh, people in my workplace they are good people or maybe i don't know them but there are a lot of good people in this world what will happen to them in the akhirah so no one can ask allah and challenge allah in what allah does la yus'alu amma yaf'alu wa hum yus'alun no one la yus'alu amma whatever allah does nobody can ask him he is not asked about what he does this is what the quran says la yus'alu amma yaf'al wa hum yus'alun they will be asked about what they do so that is the first point to answer this question and that is we are not in a position to challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah follows his own laws and he has legislated those laws the second point when it comes to assigning mercy assigning adab assigning heaven and hell we have a very very clear rule we do not assign individuals to heaven and hell we do not assign personalities to jannah and nar to rahma and adab we talk about generalities not specifics okay your friend michael dies no one has the right to say if michael died as a muslim or non-muslim he's going to go to heaven he's going to go to hell no one your friend mustafa dies no one can say mustafa was a pious man he's going to go to jannah doesn't matter we are quiet about individuals except if allah has said tabbat yada abi lahab wa tab ma aghna anhu malu ma kasab sayasla what Naran. We can say Abu Lahab is in Nar because Allah says so. Otherwise, we are quiet about individuals. We never assign any individual to any specific fate, but we speak in generalities. We speak with conditions. Those who believe and do righteous deeds will go to Jannah. This is generalities. Those who reject Allah will go to Jahannam. This is generalities. Mustafa, Michael, who might have done this and that, we are quiet because we do not know what is inside of them. Okay, the third point, it is very, very clear in the Quran and Sunnah that there is one path that leads to Jannah. In the Dina in the Lahil Islam, the religion that is acceptable to Allah is Al Islam. Allah says in the Quran. قُلْ كُونُوا هُودًا أَنَّ صَارَ قَلْمَ تَهْتَدُوا بَلْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفًا وَقَالُوا كُونُوا هُودًا أَنَّ صَارَ تَهْتَدُوا They said, not Allah, they said, Be Yehudi, be Nasrani, you shall be guided. بَلْ No. بَلْ here is حرف إضراب, you negate what preceded it. No. I will follow the Milla of Ibrahim who worshipped Allah alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ This is the most explicit verse in the Qur'an that is imaginable. You cannot even word a verse that is more explicit. It's not even possible in the Arabic language. Whoever chooses any other way of life other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him. And he shall be in the hereafter amongst the losers. You cannot get more explicit than this. Now, having said this, I then went on and I said, all of this, we are talking about the paths that lead to Allah. And we say there is one path that leads to Allah. Only one path. And this does not mean that if somebody says he's on the path, that he is actually on it. I.e., somebody says he's a Muslim, doesn't mean he's going to go to Jannah. Doesn't mean it automatically. Nor does it mean that if somebody is not on the path, that they might not be forgiven as an exceptional scenario and be caused to enter Jannah. The path does not lead to Jannah if it's not Islam. But it is possible that somebody on another path might be forgiven by Allah due to specific circumstances. And we all know exceptions are not made the rule. The rule is very clear. What is the rule? 
whoever searches for a religion other than Islam, whoever chooses a religion other than Islam, it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be from the losers in the hereafter, from the khasiri in the hereafter. So, it is possible that a person is not a Muslim and ends up in Jannah. That is an exception. We never make it the rule. We never say, oh yes, non-Muslims are entering heaven. No! Or else you say something like this, the purpose of Islam becomes meaningless. We said there are exceptions. How do we know there are exceptions? Firstly, Allah says in the Quran, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا And Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا We will not punish anyone until the Prophet has been sent. And that's why our Prophet said that whoever hears about me and then rejects me. Aha! So the one who doesn't hear about our Prophet or our scholars add to this, the one who doesn't hear correctly, i.e. he had a very negative image of Islam and he didn't know what Islam was, he never read the books of Islam, he never met a Muslim. So this person, what is his fate? Do we automatically say they're going to go to Jannah, which is what some of our previous scholars said? That is also not very logical because if the one who doesn't know Islam automatically enters Jannah and you are a Muslim and you meet this person, why should you give him da'wah when automatically he's entering Jannah? Think about it like that. This also doesn't make any sense. Some of our scholars said this, but it makes no sense. The correct position is mentioned in the hadith in Musa Imam Ahmad that our Prophet said, there will be four people on the Day of Judgment. And he mentioned them. The old man who couldn't think straight when Islam came to him. The, the, the decrepit old man, number one. Number two, the deaf person. Remember, before there was sign language, a person born deaf meant he is not communicating. Nobody can talk to him, doesn't understand anything. The, you know, Helen Keller inventing sign language changed the whole world for that group of people and allowed them to communicate. Otherwise, for centuries and centuries, a person born deaf could not communicate with anything. And so there was as if they were living in a different dimension. So uh, the one born deaf and the one born between two prophets, Ahl al-Fatra, right? And the one up to, uh, the no prophet was sent to. So the Prophet mentioned categories. They will say to Allah on judgment day, Oh Allah, it's not our fault. And each one will give an excuse. So Allah will say, what if I had sent you a prophet and you saw the prophet? Would you have believed in him? Of course, on judgment day, what will they say? Yes, of course. So Allah will say, I will test you. Then Allah will send an angel and the angel will have something that looks like fire and they will recognize him to be from Allah as an angel. And the angel will say, if you truly believe in Allah, jump into this. And so those who trust Allah and jump in will be saved by Allah and enter Jannah and those who don't will have rejected. The point is there will be a test on judgment day for those people. We can make qiyas upon this and say anyone who did not hear of Islam and lived in times and places where there was no access to Islam, that person will be tested on judgment day, no problem. Okay, bottom line that this question we understand why it's so relevant, people want to ask it, we understand why people get emotional, but at the same time, from a textual and logical and rational perspective, from a unanimous perspective, every single evidence of the Sharia and our common sense tells you, religions are either right or wrong, there's no middle path. Yes, we live in this world in peace and harmony, no question about it. Yes, we have good adab, no question about it. Yes, we are kind and merciful, no question about it. But on judgment day, there is one religion that will be rewarded. And there is one religion that is correct. That You cannot both simultaneously be correct. Either it is okay to worship an idol or it is not okay. Either you bow down in front of Jesus Christ or you don't. Either you worship Allah or you don't. There is no middle ground. So we say, in the deen in the Allah islam and this is what we preach to the people. But we also realize there will be exceptions. There might be many exceptions, but we never make the exceptions into a, into a what? Into a rule. We never preach the exceptions. Because when you preach the exception, you're negating the rule. You don't go and tell people, oh guys, don't worry, many people will be forgiven on judgment, they go ahead and commit sins. No, you don't do that, do you? You say the general rule, the sinner is going to be punished. That's what we preach, right? That's the whole purpose. Similar thing goes over here. We preach there is one way, and on the day of judgment, there will be exceptions. Now one final point, again, I went into a lot of detail, but this is very, uh, this is very sensitive issues, and people get very emotional, understandably, understandably. The real, one of the real problematic issues in our time. So we talked about the one who has never heard of Islam, 
but was overall religious. We hope good for that person. We hope good for that person on judgment day. We don't pronounce any judgment. That that person never heard of Islam. Talk about the tribes of Brazil. Some, you know, or, or go back 500 years, the people living in this land, the native Indians. They would never have heard of Islam. We hope good for them that if they were faithful to their morality, and they try to live good lives and inside everybody knows what is a good life. We are hopeful, but we don't pronounce a judgment. We talked about those who have the potential to hear Islam, but they don't do so. And we say that's not good news. We're, that's not that optimistic. If they just lock themselves shut in their houses, if they just want to live their lives like animals and don't think about higher cause, they are falling short. So that's a problem on them. Alhamdulillah, we are happy to announce the launch of the One Islam TV app. Watch hundreds of high quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two new videos uploaded daily, insha'Allah. Watch videos on demand, or download videos and watch offline. No more annoying ads or pop-ups. 100% safe browsing for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest, or drive with your device switched off. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means the small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqah jariya, continuous charity for you. As we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work. interesting video i'm just thinking to myself if if we're living a life where we're already it's like a test that we're living we're already being tested by whatever we face here on earth why is it why would god feel the need to still test us further i really appreciate the concept of god which i believe in as well yes but why would he still want to test us on judgment day or test those ones that lived some sort of way to just prove that yes they did believe in god it's like walking from one test to another so you might as well just throw in the ball and say you know what i don't care i'll just be tested on judgment day because doesn't god know everything that we do even in the dark, the good, the bad. So why not just tell us, you know what, you did this, you did this, you go this side, you go this side. Why does it, why do people have to go through another test on that day? And um, atheists, 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 why do I feel like I'm pronouncing it wrong? They, they don't believe in any religion. But what if they live a righteous life? And the title to this video is what happens to good non-muslims on judgment day so this is an atheist but they've lived a very very good life a life that god has seen through what happens to those because they're not just believing in anything they've decided no i won't believe in the concept of god i just want to believe yes i exist yes i do this i'm going to good i'm going to do good by myself because I want to and all that. So what happens to those atheists? And another thing was, um, other than just atheists, what if that those people that say, yes, God does exist, unlike atheists, but I just don't want to conform myself to any religion. I don't want Christianity. I don't want to be recognized as a monk. I don't want to be recognized as belonging to... Um, the religion of islam i just don't want to be associated with anything but i know god does exist 
and I'm going to practice these laws or rules not from any of the religions but just rules that make sure that I'm doing right by this word also what happens to those people so all those things are things that we should consider but I personally believe as long as a person is doing right doing right in the eyes of God I feel like everyone has a place in heaven everyone has a place to be with God after this world if that's what you believe in you know and um it really depends you really can't force someone to believe in God you really can't force anyone to believe in any religion it's really up to them if you watch this how does it make you feel does it make you feel like you want to belong to a religion does it make you feel some type of way it's really really up to you and how you receive that message otherwise let me know what you guys think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe if there's something you want me to react to please please drop it down below and i'll be more than glad to react to it and i'll see you in my next video